We're alive. Does it tell you how many viewers are on there? Uh, not sure where that would be. I'm looking. Uh, on the right, I think. Yeah. Um, no, I don't see it. Um, can you hear? Yeah, but it's very low. I think. It's very low. Right. I'm just going to send her a note. You're live, by the way, doing this. You what? You're live. Okay, I know. Just need to send a note for a second here, folks. Just hang on. Um, Okay, we're on airplane mode, and if you're here, we still have about a minute or two uh, until we actually start. Let's give everyone a chance to get here, and um, I'm just looking to see. All right. If you want to send a chat, uh, I'd love to see something. Let me know where you're, where you're um, watching from, what city, what state. Uh, that would be nice to know. So I'll say hello to you all. <laughs> okay, thanks, Pat. I'm glad you can see and hear us. Bob's behind the camera, I'm in front, and uh, we'll be getting going just just a moment. Give it, give it a chance to hit two o'clock. Okay, we have someone from glorious Havre de Grace, Maryland joining us, and that's where I'm uh, broadcasting from, so we're on the same page. Beautiful day out. Let Blitzer come to you from Harvard Grace Marlowe. Thank you. Thank you. I know we've got some dead air here, but I, I just want to wait till here. Here we are. We're at 2 o'clock now, folks. Welcome to everyone who is uh, joining me today. Uh, my name is Les Picker. Behind the camera is Bob Boyer, our tech guru. And uh, Bob and I are here in Havre de Grace, Maryland. So, um, beautiful day out today. And uh, today we're going to be talking about tripods, folks. I, I mentioned last week that we'll be doing that. And by the way, you see I'm standing here in that light that you see above my head. Uh, it's, it's actually not from the lights. It's a halo coming from my head. No, actually, it's the reflection of the light that's lighting up uh, at the area where I'm going to be showing you this. But at any event, uh, we're going to be talking about tripods today, and it's going to be an informal discussion. So please, if you have questions, fire them out here, and I'll answer them as, as I get to certain points where there's a clean break that I can make. Uh, so bear that in mind. Uh, what I'm going to do basically here, there are hundreds of tripods out on the market. Uh, I'm going to tell you the tri mostly talk about the tripods that I use, but I'm going to show you some other ones also and how you might use them in your photography because there are a lot of specialty tripods out there today. So I've, um, I've owned a lot of tripods over my life and I've now, uh, over the past several years, settled on basically one brand of tripod that I really, really like. So we'll talk about that. And one thing I do want to mention is that I am a still photographer. So I'll be basically fo well, only focusing on tripods that are useful to still photographers. If you are a videographer, then this is not the, the, um, the, the uh, webinar for you to be in probably because uh, the 
videographers need a you know a different kind of a ball head on their on their uh, equipment. So let's let's put that aside. I'm a still photographer. That's what I'm going to be representing. Okay, so let me let's uh, get a start here with what I look for uh, in a tripod when I go out to buy one. There are four things that I look for: uh, construction. Is it well constructed? And I'm going to actually walk you through some of that as I show you tripods here. Um, next thing is functionality. Does it do the things that I need for it to do for the work that I do? So I am a landscape, wildlife, and travel photographer. As a result, I have certain needs in the tripod, and I'm going to show you what those needs are, and then we'll talk it through. So uh, construction is number one. Uh, functionality is number two. Third thing is weight. I look, I look uh, to weight issues because I am hiking long distances with a tripod on my shoulder or maybe attached to my backpack. If you tuned in last week, you saw how I attach it to my backpack. Um, and that gets to be very, very tedious. I mean, if, you've, if I hike for 30 minutes, it's no problem. I don't care about the weight. But I'm hiking for hours at a time. And that and lugging it around here and there, even getting it in and out of the car is can be a hassle if the if the tripod is too weighty. So we're going to be talking about uh, the weight part. And then the fourth and final thing I look at is price. So construction, functionality, weight, and price. We're going to be looking at all of those. All right. So. Um, Let's take a look at some tripods, and uh, I'm going to have to ask Bob to focus on certain things as we go along. Um, <laughs> now you're going to think this is a joke, but here's a tripod, folks. Um, as tiny as it is, it actually folds up even tinier, so, you know, like that. But uh, you might say, well, oh my God, whenever would you use something like that? It's just absurd. Well, it isn't. Let me just point out to you that... Uh, I have bought this nifty little attachment for the tripod, which just screws on just like that. And this little attachment is designed to hold my iPhone. Whoop, put it in the wrong way. So I can actually just set it on a table uh, if I want to do a selfie, inter an interview with myself. I can just set it on the table and there it is. Or I can interview someone else actually. Uh, and I've done that. One time I was in Yukon territory, nowhere near any other equipment that I could use in a tiny room. And I actually had to use this thing. So uh, look at it any way you wish. Uh, it, does have, it does have some uh, validity. The other one are, are these uh, Gorilla Pods. Um, they come in different sizes and strengths. So I would not use this on, with my DSLRs, full frame DSLRs, or with my um, medium format cameras. But uh, if you have a point and shoot, this small size works wonderfully. Uh, great thing about it, and I'll, I'll point it out uh, on this tripod, for example, is that you can just wrap it around anything, a branch or wherever uh, that you wish. and um, this thing, you can then use it to, you know, if you're on a branch, you can put your camera on there and, and use it. Uh, so it's pretty convenient. Uh, it's a good thing to have in your bag if, you're, if you have a smaller camera and, and you don't want the hassle of carrying a big tripod. But of course, the obvious limitations are that it doesn't, doesn't go up high. Um, and uh, you have to make sure to get the one that holds the camera weight that you have. They have some new ones. The new, uh, lately, they have some others that, have, that are much heavier uh, in terms of the weight they can carry. They don't weigh much more, but they, are, uh, they do can hold a heavier camera. All right, next up, uh, we're going in order here, uh, is a, a typical camera that you can get on sale somewhere. Uh, you, you see them on the internet uh, frequently, B&H, Adorama, any of those places. Um, and, you know, they're heavily advertised. Um, 
If you are at all serious about photography, I would highly recommend you stay away from these. And the reason being that if you take a look at these uh, legs here, they're extremely spindly. Um, and when you set up a camera on here, a nice heavy camera, what will happen is that the, the uh, camera will shake, the tripod shakes, and you wonder, hey, I'm on a tripod, why am I getting blurred images? Well, the answer is that the tripod is not steady. If your base isn't steady, your f images are not gonna be great. Now you could say, well, you know, I can just use a faster shutter speed. Absolutely. Why do you need a tripod then? Tripod, if you're gonna shoot moving water, let's say with a, with a slower shutter speed, um, clouds that are moving, uh, things like that, you, you, you definitely need to have a tripod um, and you want a steady tripod. You don't want the tripod moving uh, on you. So this, you know, now I'm gonna show you the next tripod and this will give you an example of the difference, but it's only, and I'm gonna, I'll do this a couple of more times also. This is my travel tripod. Just look at the difference in the thickness of the legs, right? Believe it or not, the weight is not terribly different. The reason being that this uh, one here is a metal, tripod, whereas this is carbon fiber, you know, the, the, probably the, the latest advancement in uh, tripod technology. So this is my travel tripod. It only weighs, I think, four pounds without the head on it. I'm going to be talking to you about that in a moment. So allow me to put away this tripod for a minute. I'm going to come back to it and then just talk about uh, generically about tripods. When you go to buy a higher-end tripod, this particular one is a Gitzo uh, tripod. The Gitzo tripods uh, are very, very good tripods. No, no, you know, no bones about that. This is how you would buy it: just the legs themselves, without the part that holds the camera itself. Let me just see. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Um, the, uh, so, you, so that's what you're dealing with. And, and I've used this Gitzo for many years, uh, very faithfully. It's a bit heavy. Uh, it's got some, you know, significant metal components on it that, that makes it heavy. This uh, foam that you see on it are, is basically so that when I carry it around, uh, it, it sits easy on my shoulders because with the camera attached, it's going to be kind of heavy. But also, I do a lot of winter photography when it's 30, 40, even 50 degrees below zero. And I don't want to be gripping those cold uh, tripod legs. Uh, I want to be able to hold on to the, onto the foam. Uh, but any event, and I should mention, by the way, that speaking of cold weather, this, the reason this is so ragged over here can, can they see it, Bob, do you think? Yeah, um, it's because this tripod w with my camera mounted on it was taken by a, a grizzly bear in Yukon territory um, and actually dragged into the tundra uh, where he contentedly chewed on it for about five minutes before I was able to get the uh, tripod back. So uh, this has served me you know, faithfully. It has some flaws. To it, and I'm gonna. But when I show you the next two tripods, the ones that I use every day uh, nowadays, you'll see what, I, what I'm talking about. So, any questions? Just feel free to fire away here. All right. So let's go back to my travel tripod, and um, a very very nice uh, compact tripod. Once it's folded up, it fits easily into a suitcase. So I like it for that reason. It's also light. And if, I, if weight is a problem, like when I'm in Africa or certain places where I'm limited to, let's say, a 40-pound piece of luggage total, then I've got to go to here versus one of these larger tripods like the Gitzo that I just showed you. So, uh, so this is uh, uh, the tripod. So what would you look for it, once you have the legs that, that we talked about? And I'll, I'll go over some of those features too. Well, the first thing you're going to need is a ball head. The ball head is the part that sits on top of the tripod and um, it just screws on. 
and off like this, as so. All right, and it's a standard thread that it screws onto on the tripod. Make sure it's clamped down well. There's a, a place here where you can where you can uh, screw it down so it, it's nice and firm. Uh, so this is what's known as a, a ball head, and by that I mean if I loosen this, there's a ball inside the tripod head that allows the uh, the, the top part where the camera is going to sit to rotate around and that way you can level when you're when you're uh, shooting you can level the tripod and uh, so on works very nicely this uh, I outfit all my tripods with what I uh, is, is called a quick release head so what it does is uh, can they see that from that can angle I'll zoom in from there. is that better I'll, I'll zoom in. All right. Okay. Bob's going to zoom in for us. Okay. Got it? Yeah, you can see. Okay, so here's the, uh, the ball head with a quick release. So all I have to do, and I will show you this on the next tripod, but uh, is put the camera in here with, its, with a base plate on it, and, and then just clamp it down, and you're all set. That is as opposed to a different kind of uh, ball head mechanism that sits on top instead of instead of this one there's an, another type which simply has a hand screw that uh, tightens it. Some people really like this they prefer it over the quick release. I prefer the quick release because it gets me uh, into sh gets me to shoot uh, quicker. I don't have to worry about making sure it's all tight and uh, so on. So this is uh, a regular screw type. This is the quick release. So I like this because of the size. I like it because of the weight. Uh, but I'd like to show you the features of a, of a good tripod. This, by the way, is a really right stuff tripod. I should have mentioned that to you. A really right stuff tripod. Now look, I don't have any uh, relationship with, they, they don't sponsor me or whatever, but I've been using them, their stuff for probably 15 years now. Um, I probably sent at least two of their kids to college in, in buying their gear. Uh, but I, to me anyway, and I've used other, other brands in the past, they make the finest uh, tripod equipment, period, and panorama equipment, period. Uh, every, the tolerances are absolutely exacting. Uh, it's, they're pricey, but I am a believer that you, know, you buy as best as you can because you'll have less problems, uh, fewer problems with them as, you, uh, as the years go by. So, uh, what was I going to say here about that? Okay, so there's, um, uh, there's the travel tripod. Now let me go to the, whoop, I'll put this down here, to the, uh, the workhorse tripod. This is the go-to tripod. Now, again, I want to show you this. Here's the tripod, Bob. If you can just get down to the legs a little bit here, can you? Yeah. Okay, so look at the difference in the, in the legs of, of this beast, All right? And uh, you can see that, you know, a, a tripod uh, like this one is going to give you a lot more stability. Interestingly enough, it, it doesn't weigh a, a terrible amount. I mean, uh, like, like this, I, you know, I can handle it, even though I have arthritis, by the way, on my hands. Uh, still, this is, um, this is uh, uh, pretty good. So um, this is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the TVC-34L, it's called. It's the three-series tripod that, uh, that Really Right Stuff makes. They make a series... One, uh, I'm not sure about one, but two, three, and four. This is uh, the Series 3 tripod. And the head that's on it is the BH55, which I absolutely love. You, it's pretty beat up, folks, because I've had it all over the world, from both poles to uh, desert environments, etc. And, and it is just one heck of a uh, tripod. Uh, again, I have the, um, the uh, quick-release plate on here, so you know that gives me the flexibility that I need. So let me just show you how easy it is. 
If I take, uh, this is my um, medium format camera, it's a Fuji GFX 100, and all it takes is, as you just saw, I just take the camera, just put it on here, clamp it, I'm done. It's totally solid at that point on. There's no way that thing's gonna move. Um, this, the ball head here, and that's the second thing in a tripod. You want to make sure you get a good ball head. Um, you notice that the ball head allows me to rotate the camera in any direction. That allows it, obviously, I can make sure my pictures are level. But another thing I would urge you to do if you are a landscape photographer, I would suggest that you try to get yourself justified buying also a leveling uh, a, a leveler for the tripod. I'm pointing to one right now. The, the reason you use a leveler has nothing to do, I mean, if you're a still photographer, you're just shooting still images, you don't need a leveler. But if you are like me, and you are actually shooting panorama, uh, a lot of pan panoramas, where you have a special panorama head like this, which is also from Really Right Stuff, right? Something like this. You need to make sure that the tripod is level, not just the camera. And I tell you, I went through hassle after hassle. I mean, for years before I got a leveling base, uh, I would have to move my tripod legs to get the uh, tripod level. I'd have to pull the legs out, pull them in. And then I'd be ready to shoot and I'd decide, no, no, I'd like it better just another foot over, and then I'd have to do the whole thing all over again. Okay. Yeah, so a leveling... just leveling the camera. Yeah, so, so what you're doing in this case with the, uh, with the um, leveling base is you've, you need to, when you are shooting a pano, and I'll put this into this system here, Um, you have to be level throughout the sweep of your, of your image. You're going to be taking a bunch of images swept through, uh, through an arc. And for that, you need both the leveler, or else you have to mess with your tripod legs, as well as the ability to, um, to level your, your camera by you know, leveling it this way. So I'm just saying, this isn't, a, I'm not here to teach about, um, about panoramic photography. That's a separate thing. I teach a, a workshop on panoramic photography. And, um, but that's not the purpose here. So let me just put this, take this off, now that I've shown you that. All right, um, another thing that you should look for in a tripod when you get it, what are the other things? Uh, the, another thing that I like is, let's take a look down in this area. One is the feet themselves, right? Uh, really right stuff, for example, gives a very wide foot that allows it to give you, more give you more stability as you set your tripod up, as opposed to, let's say, this Gitzo, in which you see, now you can order special tips, but uh, the difference in the size of the tips is substantial. And I like the, um, I really like the fact that I have more stability with, with these uh, feet. The other thing is the knurled knobs. They're significantly wider, big, larger diameter than they are in many, many other tripods. That gives you the advantage, for me anyway, of I c just one eighth turn. That's all, just an eighth of a turn allows you the very smooth operation of the tripod, so uh, of the legs of the tripod. So that's a, a significant advantage to me uh, when you're out in the field. If it's cold out and you're wearing gloves, you don't want to mess with trying to get th this thing loosened and tightened. This way, it occurs very quickly. You just, you know, your, your legs pull out very nicely. All right, uh, another thing, of course, is that on every tri most tripods, good, well, good quality tripods nowadays, also have a hook on the bottom. That's so that if it's windy out, uh, you are able to hook your backpack 
or I've even in the past used a uh, sack, like, like a stuff sack for, that you use for your tent or for, or for your sleeping bag, and just fill it with some stones, and then I hang the sack from the center and uh, make sure that it, it gives you a really uh, solid base. So there's something there to uh, think about. Another thing I love about this tripod is that you, you have access to these um, releases that allow you to then bring your, your um, legs out all the way straight. So I can go down to the ground quite low. Um, of course, I've got this thing in the way, so I can't get all the way to the ground. Although, with my travel tripod, with my travel tripod, I'm able to um, get all the way down, which I love that when I'm shooting uh, flowers or insects or something like that. Whoop, I'm able to get all the way down. You can see, I can get right down to the ground with that. So it's a really good, good feature to have. And these, are, these things click into position. You hear the click. So you have click stops that, that uh, work for you also. Another, another thing I like. So look for big knurled knobs. That always helps. Look for the ability to turn the tripod uh, with, uh, with minimum effort. Uh, another thing that I appreciate, and, and especially for those of you who are panorama shooters, what you will really appreciate is the exacting markings on this. Bob, can we get a, a look at that? Uh, all right, we have it. So right here you have these markings, and when you rotate your ball head, you'll notice that you know the, there's a mark on the rotating part that indicates where you are in this uh, along this scale, this the, these me this measured scale, and that gives you a real opportunity to get very exacting panoramas as you as you rotate around, uh, because you know how many spaces you need to go in order to get a one-third or one-half overlap in each of your pano images. So it's a very, very, good, um, very good thing to have. Uh, the, uh, so there's another, I, I'm, I guess, done with that part of it. We can come back up. Uh, we talked about pano gear. If you're interested in taking panoramic photography, this, this uh, particular piece of gear is, uh, whew, it's gotta be a dozen years old. The, the, newer, the newer models that uh, Really Right Stuff has are pretty spiffy. But the thing I like about this, uh, and, and by, <laughs> I should also mention on this camera, I have an L plate that allows me to switch from horizontal to vertical easily, and that's a really right stuff L plate. So I, I'm telling you, they, they, um, they certainly do well by me. So here's the thing I want to show you that I think makes a difference. I don't only use this for, um, for panoramas. When I'm in Africa, or I'm in Sri Lanka, or I'm in places where there's a good amount of wildlife, I actually use this as almost like a Wimberly head because everything is fluid here. So I can, if I loosen my, uh, th my uh, tripod ball head, I, I get a lot of rotational movement. I can stop it at any point and it's perfectly balanced. So it, will, it works. Uh, so, so it really serves double duty is, is what I'm getting at. And I think, um, uh, so I get a lot of use out of that if you're interested in using a, getting b double duty out of one, one particular item. All right, let's, uh, let me talk about some, end up by talking about um, maintenance of your tripod. First, I, I do a lot of photography from the water. I'm either in the ocean and the waves are, you know, coming up. Be careful of 
rogue waves, by the way. But let's assume you have nice, calm ocean. You're, you're actually putting a tripod in the water, or you're in mud, or even fresh water. Please make sure when you get home to rinse off your tripod, especially the feet you know, that, that were right in the, um, in the muck. So I, that's what I do is I just simply, you know, make, I typically will take out, pull out all the legs and then rinse it down well in, in a garden hose or a shower. So that's point number one. Every so often, learn, there are lots of videos online, I'm thinking of doing one myself uh, in, in sometime in the next month, on uh, taking your tripod apart. You should learn how to take your, uh, remove all the legs of your tripod, right? And um, being able to take it apart so that you can service it. You can clean it and service it. So here I am, I'm actually removing the tube from the tripod. It's a very easy thing to do. Uh, and I'm gonna close it up right now because I'm not gonna get into the details of how that's done right at the moment. But it's, um, a good thing to do every so often, especially if you notice the tripod's getting a little jerky when you try to pull it in or out, or if you um, uh, get stuck, then something, uh, then you probably need a, a bit of a cleaning. The good thing about Really Right Stuff is everything is internally sealed nicely. So I rarely, I used to have to clean my Gitzo all the time. Uh, in fact, I had to order uh, some slides uh, that the things that allow the legs to slide uh, inside one another, I had to order them from England in order to get them uh, in. But I, but I find with uh, really right stuff, it's, it's not as necessary. Another thing I would recommend strongly with tripod use is carry an extra tip with you. Now, when I put, for, when it comes from the factory, they, they use this thing, a uh, substance called Loctite in order to make it so the tips don't come off. But folks, they're gonna come off. At some point, you know, you keep it in water a lot and mud a lot and heat and cold. There's contraction, expansion. At some point, you're gonna probably lose one of the tripod feet. So I always carry at least one extra with me. Uh, two wouldn't hurt, they don't take up much room. It's just this little rubber neural thing here uh, and uh, Really Right Stuff sells them separately. So you can always uh, get that. Uh, another thing I do is I carry with me, and I don't have examples here, I should, but I don't have it right handy, um, is I, I carry extra sliders. Remember I told you these things have like plastic or composite sliders that they, they slide on uh, in a, inside each tube. Each tube has its own set of different size sliders. So I carry one complete set with me wherever I go. It's made out of plastic. They nest inside one another as you travel. It takes up no room uh, and it weighs nothing. They're, they're, like I said, pieces, little half round things of plastic. I would recommend that you um, carry a set with you just in case. Uh, chances of that, of you needing it are slim, but uh, it keeps you from having to mess around uh, with trying to f fight a tripod, because uh, replacing them is very easy once you learn how to do it. Another thing I do, and I, was, this is just a suggestion, is um, this tripod is fairly substantial. It's, it's a bit longer than others, although it folds up very nicely. It isn't terribly long. So it, this thing, believe it or not, fits into my suitcase. I have a, a fairly good size uh, pack that I put things in. But what I usually do when I travel is I separate the, um, the tripod head from and I hadn't tightened this up first. Okay, so I separate the tripod head from the tripod when I travel. And I put this in, it comes in a nice, uh, uh, nice bag that protects it. I put it in that bag. I put this in the, you know, when I travel. And that way I'm, I'm left with it, just nice light uh, thing. Uh, usually I put this 
uh, I pack socks in around here, so I, I make use of every, every bit of room that I can. Okay, um, I think that that about does it as far as tripods go. If you have any questions, I'm looking here, I don't see a hi to Mark, uh, hi Avesta, hey Pat. Uh, so that's, that's basically uh, it. If you, but if you do have any questions, feel free to write me. Uh, you can go to my website and you can send me an email, less at lesterpickerphoto.com. Um, please uh, visit my website because every, pretty regularly I publish a blog with some information, some educational material about, about photography. Uh, we also, once COVID resolves itself, we do offer a bunch of workshops right here in our studio in Havre de Grace, Maryland. And as well, uh, we, I lead workshops, uh, pho photography tours throughout the world. So next, in 2022, we're going to be going to Tonga, getting into the water with humpback whales and photographing them, the gentle animals, giants of the sea. Uh, we'll be going to New Zealand. Uh, we're doing trips to, um, to Patagonia, uh, to Africa, and so on, as, as I typically uh, do. So keep, uh, keep posted uh, through my website. Join our, join our uh, list, our mailing list, and I think that way you'll be kept in good stead. Um, let's see. Uh, I, any, someone asked if there's any opinion on Inoral tripods. I don't know that brand. I'm sorry, there are so many brands out there. I recently reviewed, uh, if you go to my website, you'll see reviews for tripods over the years. I recently reviewed a tripod uh, from Germany with great hopes that it would be a, a good travel tripod. Uh, the problem with it was that the legs were just too thin and, and wobbly. And even though it cost a bloody fortune, um, it, just, it just didn't make the grade. So that is another thing I did want to cover. I, I did not do that before. Uh, someone asked, well, you know, what do these tripods cost? Uh, a tripod like the really right stuff, this is uh, uh, the um, uh, Series 3 tripod. It's got... This is an L model, which means that it, it, it goes out pretty darn long. You might say, well, why do you need this? This is way over my head as far as this thing goes out. Um, as you can well see, right? And the answer is sometimes I shoot uh, from cliffs or from very highly sloping areas, and I want to be able to get the tripod, uh, one, at least one of the legs, a little bit lower than where I am, so that is all, uh, that, that's why, you know, you need the extra length. You may not need it, but, but the, I certainly do. Uh, in any event, a tripod like this uh, would cost, and it, it varies because you can get different parts, different aspects to it. Uh, the, uh, a tripod like this is about $1,200, so it's not a... a, a, a um, Legs only or with a head? It's, uh, that's just... As you see, but without the leveler, okay? Just the tripod, the leveler is extra. The head, the BH55 head, again, there are a couple of options with it, and that will run you about between five and $650 for the uh, BH55 head. So it's not an inconsequential expense, by the way, but I'm a believer that not just in quality, uh, the customer service there is fantastic. Uh, you get personalized. People answer the phone and will actually get you an answer to any questions you have. Cam cameras come and go. Tripods don't. Yeah. Uh, like Bob just uh, pointed out, cameras come and go. Tripods don't. You'll always have your, cam your tripod. Whatever camera you have, you'll be mounting it on here because you'll always have a plate on the bottom that fits uh, a regular Swiss Arca plate. This one doubles as an L bracket, but you can have just a plain plate on the bottom of your camera and it just mounts this way. So it's expensive. So between the two, you know, you're talking 
$1,600, $1,700. That's a lot of money. I understand uh, not to be taken lightly, but I think uh, this is so fundamental to my work. I'm going to say 70% of my work, maybe even 80% of my work is done from a tripod. So for me, it's absolutely essential, and I don't want to mess around with a lesser product. I want a, a really good a really good product. And by the way, I'll be teaching a panorama. It was supposed to happen this June, but um, with COVID, we postponed it. Date unknown right now, but I'll be teaching a um, workshop on panorama. And we'll be using uh, uh, really right stuff equipment to do that because, again, you'll learn it the right way. You can always compromise with equipment later, but to learn it, it's best to learn it uh, the, with, with good equipment. Okay, uh, anything else? I'm sorry about the inaugural. I didn't know about it. Um, was there a specific device you used for leveling? Yes, Alan, there, there is. I mentioned this before. Uh, so I have, if I'm going to shoot a still photograph, just a regular landscape, then what I would do is mount my camera, and, this, uh, and then I, I'm going to turn this sideways so you can uh, see it, or at least at an angle. Uh, what I would do is level it by, you know, going, using my ball head to level if I'm taking a single shot or a series of single shots. Um, so, so that would be that. And I have a, a in, in my viewfinder, I have a electronic level, so it tells me when I am level. I can also, the, another beautiful thing about Really Right Stuff is that it's got a bunch of levels, uh, uh, bubble levels here. There's one here on the leveling base. There's one here. Uh, so, so you have plenty of levels that you can rely on. I rely on the one in my camera uh, because it's quite accurate. However, if you're going to shoot panoramas, and again, uh, I won't mount the camera to it, but I will mount the panorama base to it. Again, this is an older model. Uh, which I, like I, I said, I've had it for a bunch of years. And um, if you're shooting panoramas, it's critical that you get your, your, uh, the rotation to be level. As you go across with the arc that you're shooting, it's important to have everything quite exactly level. So what I do, so what you need to do is get, make sure your tripod legs are level. Well, that's a big pain in the rear to do. What I do is I added this leveling base here, and with one twist of my, of my finger, it, it becomes loose. I look, there's, it comes with a, um, with a uh, bubble right there. I just make sure I get that bubble right, and now I'm, I know the tripod legs are level. But the, the camera itself will not necessarily be. So now I will... Uh, using the levels that are on the pano attachment, I'll make sure, and you can see it here, those of you over there. Uh, Bob, can they see that? There's a bubble there. Yeah, yeah, there's a bubble right there. So I can make sure that I'm bubble correct this way, and then when I am, uh, just torque it down and we're set to go. Now I know I'm perfectly level every which way that I rotate this, okay? So, thanks for that question. All right, another one. Um, what's the most shots you, you'd recommend for a multi-shot panorama with a nodal ninja? All right, so I'm familiar with nodal ninja. I don't use it. I, 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 like I said, there are, I think there are at least three or four uh, panorama heads that I'm aware of. Nodal ninja is certainly a fine one. Uh, I prefer the, the really right stuff. And uh, Bob, is it, you think it's at all possible for us to get a shot behind you? So you guys, you're going to be looking now at a, at a, a, a wallpaper that we have in our studio. And it is, um, this one here is, Bob's going to, we weren't prepared to do this, so let's give Bob, uh, cut him a break here a little bit. So this wallpaper is um, 25 feet in width. It's on a curved wall, by the way. 25 feet by nine and a half feet, and it is uh, 15 images across and three rows. 
So 45 images it took uh, to do this. Um, actually, it's more than 45, but I ended up with 45 images uh, to shoot this. It was shot in Iceland, uh, a mile away from those mountains that you're looking at. It was shot with a, a Nikon D800 at the time that I was using, and it is uh, so exacting that you can see individual sheep in, in this one meadow, uh, which is a mile away. So I hope that answers your question. I don't know how many shot, I mean, it doesn't depend on the nodal ninja. It'll depend upon the resolution of your camera, uh, what the, um, how many millimeters your camera is. That particular one I shot with a Nikon 200 to 400 uh, lens. I think I shot it, Bob, do you remember it was at 300 or 400 millimeters? I thought it was closer to 200 myself. Really? I honestly forget. Okay, so we're not sure, but it was somewhere between 200 and 400, I guarantee you that. Uh, so that, yeah, good question. Um, All I remember is I had to manufacture a piece of cloud. Yeah, okay. So we're, uh, we're set. Next question, um, oh, from Phil again, dang. Well, you know, it, uh, yeah, the, the uh, you know, it, the, is the computer still working? Yeah, we, we do all our post-processing on, um, on a Mac. Uh, we're all Apple-based here, but uh, it didn't, it, it, it worked out quite well. It wasn't, you know, it took a while to, for it to stitch together, but it stitched together very nicely because, again, I use good quality equipment. I, I used a, um, you know, the, uh, a solid tripod. I used the really right stuff, uh, pano head. Um, so, so everything stitched together very nicely. And Bob did a great job in, uh, in, in us in printing it. Okay, well, hold on a second. You do have to be careful, though. You might want to let them know that you need something solid that's continuous. In no matter how many rows you do, you don't want to do a row of just sky and stuff that's moving. Yes, and good also, point. And water is always tricky if it's choppy. Okay, so Bob mentions two things, and I didn't want to get into the details of panoramas, by the way, but, but do keep in mind, please, that when you are shooting, your first row should not just be sky alone. It should include some of the mountains or whatever the structure is in the distance because it's hard to stitch has trouble stitching together sky because the clouds are moving and whatever and whatever. Uh, the other thing is um, water. Water is also always in motion and unless you're, let's say, shooting a, a, a lake in the morning with beautiful reflections and it's very still. Other than that, water is, presents a problem in, in stitching. So it's always a good idea as you do the foreground area to include some solid material, rocks or whatever, to, to um, anchor the, the uh, stitching process. It, it'll work a lot better. Okay, um, anything else, folks? We'll hold on and see if anyone else has any questions about this. Uh, if, you're going to, if you want to really write stuff, just go to reallywritestuff.com. Uh, they're also, I think the, their tripods are also sold, uh, or I think they are, at B&H and Adorama. Uh, but, you know, the, the point is, it's not really right stuff. It's just get yourself a darn good tripod. Oh, one more thing I forgot, and I've got to mention it. Um, and that is, if you are buying a really good tripod, buy it used. There's no reason why not. Some of the, I mean, these tripods, I'm going to be selling my Gitzo, by the way, um, very shortly. And, uh, of course, he's these foam things can come off. But the, the thing about the, the uh, tripod is if it's a good quality tripod, you can, it can be, you, there's nothing you're gonna do to destroy it really. I mean, this has been carried into the tundra by a bear. It's been, it's, uh, you know, I can only tell you how much, it's been in minus 50 degree weather. Uh, it's, it's good. I mean, so buy yourself a used one, get a used really right stuff. Uh, that's a good way to go if, if, the, if the initial investment is a bit too steep for you. So that's all I have to say, folks. I think that's it. Um, we, 
Yep, I think that's it. And uh, thanks for watching. Next week, next Wednesday, 2 o'clock right here. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to be talking about filters, about uh, neutral density and uh, graduated neutral density filters. And I'm going to be comparing three systems. The Lee system, the Singray system, and the brand new Wine Country system. Oh boy, i got to talk to you about that. So st stay tuned next week. Uh, I think you'll find it very interesting. I do use filters, my uh, graduated neutral densities and neutral densities uh, to get some of the images that I've taken. So tune in. Until then, thank you so much for watching.